Welcome to this episode of Practical Dispersions. My name is Nicholas Tito with Vance and Virtus, working together with Professor Stephen Abbott. This is the second of two case studies within this webinar series on how to use HSPIP to tackle practical problems in formulation R&D. In this case study, we examine bridging flocculation and why it happens, as well as how to avoid it using copolymers as dispersants. Bridging flocculation happens when one polymer connects to particle surfaces. This bridging actually causes the formation of clusters between the particles, and if the clusters get big enough, you end up with flocculation. This effect tends to get worse with increasing polymer length. So how can we mitigate this effect? First, let's dig in a bit to understand how a single polymer behaves when it's absorbed to a particle surface. Here's a polymer that has diffused through the solvent and adsorbed to a particle surface. There's actually a few important structures that the polymer can form in this state. The first is tails, formed when the endpoints of the polymer chain are not attached to the surface. The second is trains. These are the parts of the polymer that are directly connected to the particle. And the third is loops. These are interior parts of the polymer that are not adsorbed, forming arc-like structures extending away from the surface. Now, we can actually use HSPIP to take a look at these loops, trains, and tails really easily by using its volume fraction profile functionality. Let's walk through how to do this. The first step is to choose the polymer architecture. If you want to view the loops, trains, and tails, then this is only provided for the homopolymer architecture. We then set the polymer length and the chi parameters for the polymer with the solvent and the particles. Next, we define the properties for the particles, like the average radius, the Hamaker constant, and the volume fraction. And lastly, push the Calculate button in the Profile Calculation section. A cool feature of this app is that you can check off the live tick box shown above the Calculate button. This will cause the app to recalculate the volume fraction profiles again every time you change your design parameters over on the left. It's actually a really cool way to have a real-time experience within the app. So after clicking Calculate, you see the volume fraction profile output in the plotting window. These profiles are plots of local polymer volume fraction versus distance from the particle surface. The app gives you output for the total polymer volume fraction and also the contributions coming specifically from loops, trains, tails, and the unadsorbed polymers. As you would expect, loops and trains plotted in red have volume fraction profiles that are localized near the particle surface. The tails plotted in green extend further out into the solvent. Note that you can also adjust the settings for this plot by using the controls provided in the lower right of this window. Okay, so this is where we get to what I call the Faustian bargain of using polymers as dispersants. If we look back to the picture of the homopolymer adsorbed to particle surface, we need to realize that the polymer is actually always in motion. And so the number of trains, tails, and loops changes over time. The Faustian bargain is about the dual nature of these loops and tails. So on the plus side, it's the loops and tails that provide the micropillow functionality. It's why polymers work so well as dispersants. But on the negative side, it's these same loops and tails that actually want to absorb two particles. And so they can readily form bridges and cause bridging flocculation. Is there a better bargain we can come up with? And the answer is yes. The way we can get a better bargain is if we employ copolymers as dispersants. For example, one kind of copolymer we can use is a dye block, where one block can be designed to have sticky interactions with particle surfaces. This block will anchor the polymer, while the other block can be inert and non-adsorbing so that it extends into the solvent as a long tail. This tail serves as a good micropillow, and then we also can avoid issues with bridging flocculation because the inert tails don't adsorb to the particle surfaces. Another great copolymer design is a comb, which can be designed with a sticky backbone, and then the teeth side chains can be non-adsorbing. This is basically a bulkier version of a dye block architecture in terms of micropillow effect. Let's walk through how to prototype a copolymer dispersion in HSPIP. We'll choose a comb copolymer as an example and use the interparticle potential output discussed in the previous episode to see how well the comb does as a dispersion. First, we set the system type to comb AB. Next, we choose the backbone chain length and the chi parameters for how it interacts with the solvent and particles. 
Of course, the goal is for the backbone to have an affinity for the particle surfaces, and so we set the polymer particle chi parameter to be negative, meaning an attractive interaction. We also need to set the side chain length and chi parameters. In this case, we want inert, non-adsorbing side chains, and so we set the particle chi parameter to zero for these chains. The last part with the polymer design is to set the number of side chains per comb and the chi parameter between the side chains and the backbones. And then finally, we set up the particle properties. With these all in place, we can go ahead and click the Calculate button in the Interparticle Potential box. The output shown actually looks really characteristic of a good dispersion. As we covered in the last episode, we look for a characteristic hump in the interparticle potential, meaning that the polymers are doing their micropillow action. Here, the height of the hump is around 500 times room temperature energy, which means that the particles are very likely to remain dispersed. A crucial point to note here is that this comb polymer design offers all the advantages for keeping particles dispersed while really avoiding the possibility of bridging flocculation by design. All right, so let's recap this case study. We took a close look at the loops, trains, and tails that polymers form when they're adsorbed to a particle surface and showed how to quantify these features in a dispersion using HSPIP volume fraction profiles. The loops and tails are what give rise to the micropillow effect, and this is what we want in order to keep the uh, particles dispersed in the solvent. However, these same structures can also form bridge interactions between particles. This is the Faustian bargain of homopolymers as dispersants, and we can make a better bargain by using copolymer architectures instead. To dive into this, we looked at how to prototype a comb polymer with a sticky backbone and inert side chains. It provides good dispersion features and reduces chances of bridging interactions between particles. Okay, so with this, thank you for taking part in this webinar series on practical dispersions. Please reach out to Professor Stephen Abbott or I if you would like to have a deeper discussion on this topic. It'd be a pleasure. Thank you very much.